Oh, ah, I'm good to go. I'm good to go. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to see you all. It's another nice, interesting evening. I hope you're looking forward to it as much as I am. Because honestly, this, this, this very question we are discussing today, is monogamy a fantasy? It's something that I'm having to answer to my kids, by the way. I mean, I, I, I need to basically tell them, yeah, this is why monogamy is, you know, is real. It's something that we can actually do. So that's a conversation we're going to be having today. And we're going to be doing this with Wagata, good friend of mine, and the one who actually got this going. Because he will tell us a bit more about that post that triggered, triggered my insistence on having this conversation. So Ewagata, karibu sana. Thank you, thank you. How are you doing? I'm good. Very good to see you. <laughs> it's good to see you. Today you're the one who's supposed to be telling us how on earth you're going to tell our kids that they can <laughs> they, they can believe in monogamy. In fact, when, when starting this conversation, mm -hmm. somebody asked me whether, you know, if, if the partners do not know each other or if they do not meet each other, is that called monogamy? You know, because it's one at a time. That's, that's called crime. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just call it what it is. Uh, you're just good at it. You've not been caught. You're just good at it. You haven't been caught. Yes. yes. All right. So that's that's but, generally what we are going to be trying to get into today, mm -hmm. and demystify this. Of course, also look at where we are at because we yeah. we have had opportunities, chances, and experiences of not being monogamous. And we'll yeah. go, I'll throw questions at you as we go along, but I'd like to hear what you have sure. to say. So I think I'll start, I'll introduce myself, then have you introduce yourself. All right. So that you can take it on from there. Mm -hmm. All right. So for those of you who are joining us today, my name is Shalom Muniri. I'm really, really passionate about family working. And so a lot of what we do is run programs and sessions for parents, teenagers, young adults that will really help them connect and relate with each other. And the evolution of sex is a big thing that we need to be having yeah. lots of conversations about. So mm -hmm. what we did was just get together with a couple of friends of mine and decide, you know what, let's actually have a real talk about this as much as we possibly yeah. can. So what we are asking is that you come on, engage, ask the questions, just let's light up the chat, I will read them. Mm -hmm. uh, as we go along, and Ewagata will be taking us through this today's session, which is, mm -hmm. you know, is monogamy really a fantasy or is it something that can actually work? Last week, we looked at the beginning of sex, you know, just the, the beginning of these conversations. Yeah. Our past, our present, and our future. Where exactly are we coming from? Where are we at now? Mm -hmm. And where are we going? And so yeah. amongst the places where we are going is a place where our kids don't believe that monogamy is real. Mm -hmm. Actually, probably even half of us don't believe monogamy is real or, it can, you know, it's mm. not a fantasy. So those are the conversations yeah. I think we'll be having today. So Ewagata, introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and tell us why you accepted this challenge. <laughs> Me, I don't know why I'm... Other pastors are invited to talk about things like spiritual formation, uh, like faith formation and all those things. Me, I'm called to talk about sex. <laughs> sex is spiritual. <laughs> My name is Pastor David Ewagata. Uh, I serve at Papa Center as the Youth and Children Ministries Pastor. And I also lead uh, a ministry called Y Hub Networks, um, which is basically an outreach to young people, especially that campus generation. But we also span it to high schools, go to missions to schools uh, when they are open. And uh, I'm passionate about young people, passionate about the next generation, passionate about family because I believe at the core of a solid next generation is a solid family base. And so anything that affects family, uh, I'm all in there. Anything that builds family, I'm all in there. Anything that uh, brings restoration to families, however dysfunctional, my heart is all in there because that is the cradle for the next generation. Married to one wife, Rose, uh, and we have three kids. And so glad to be here. I think, uh, 
uh, I will start by saying a statement that will kind of undergird what uh, we'll be having a conversation on. I said this statement almost five so years ago. Um, and I, very interesting, I found a friend of mine had uh, typed it out and printed it and hung it on his office. And so I, I asked him, do you remember where you had that statement? He's like, I don't know. So I told him, I said this statement in one of our meetings. I said, uh, the, the, the believer, and let me not say the African believer, let me just say the believer has a Christian face, a traditional heart, and a secular mind. The traditional believer, heart, yeah. Yes. So he has a Christian face, yeah. a traditional heart, mm -hmm. and a secular mind. And so these are the three things that we struggle with, that on face value, we call ourselves Christian, and, and, and with all good uh, measure, I know all of us who have joined here have a connection with Christianity. Maybe perhaps we might be fortunate to have one or two Muslims or Hindus or atheists, but most of us have a, a good encounter with Christianity. And so we have a Christian face. We know what, it, what is Christian. We know what the Bible says. We have done enough Bible studies. We've done more enough nursery rhymes and you know Sunday school memory verses to know what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. uh, read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. Uh, where are we growing to? We don't know. But we know when you read our Bible and pray, we will grow. We have a traditional heart, and I will talk about it. Um, and you will see it, the traditional heart pop up when it comes to our marriage, the birth of our children, and our burial rites. Now, those are the <laughs> highlights. That's where, they, that's where, that's where the, the, glib, the blips show up. Uh, where, where we are really African, where we, how traditional we are, and they say, you know what, this child must be named after the grandfather who, you know, circumcised your father, and you, you, you have no idea what that means, and you take the name, and in some cultures, even when you don't give the correct name, the kid cries, uh, because it's so spiritual, but hey, the good Christians we are, after doing our PMCC, we get married, and we take our children to be taken through that when a child is born, when we are married. When you die, you know, uh, <laughs> the, the direction where your head faces, you know, how you enter the house, which door you come in through and which one you come out from, uh, you know, these GPS locations as to how you will be positioned, where you will be buried and all that. And we accept that because we have a traditional heart and we don't question it. And then we have a secular mind. Now, if I ask us what is dating according to Christianity, None of us has an idea. We just know it's avoiding having sex until we get married. All yeah. the other, you know, the flowers, the chocolates, the walk in the beach, you know, uh, how to wow her, the music, the lyrics, all of them have a very secular connotation. I don't, I doubt any one of us has used scripture to cut your girlfriend. Uh, anyway. <laughs> no. uh, we don't even, we don't even think scripture can be used for that. Mm. And so we have a very secular approach to dating. We have a very secular approach to relationships. We have a very secular approach to how to get a guy or a girl in the mix. And then when we are done with all that, we now want to get in and have a Christian marriage. Shock on us. We have used all the wrong weapons. We have, <laughs> we have won, we have won the wrong gear. We practice for the wrong game. We practice for rugby. Then we showed up in a football pitch. <laughs> How come it's not flowing the same way? You've been, you've been practicing serial monogamy because you have a girlfriend who you slept with, and then you broke up, and then you got the next one you slept with. You broke up, you and for bad or good reasons. Maybe this one, oh, you realized she was cheating on you. And so you also had broken and you said never again, you got the next one, you did the same thing, and then you get married and something tells you, now you can be monogamous. Mm -hmm. But you've been practicing, you know, series. You've, 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 you've had a series for your 13 years, 14, 15, 16. Every year you've had a change of, of sport. Now you want to tell your body uh, zero grazing. Your body is like Joe. <laughs> we don't do things <laughs> like this. This is not how we were raised. This is this not, is not us. Oh, but the Bible says, yeah, the Bible says, uh, but the Bible has not been applied for the last 15 years. And we are so shocked. Even, even your spouse who you slept with when you were still dating, 
before you got married is so shocked that you are sleeping with somebody else because they are thinking, no, 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 it was us sinning together. You can't in in involve somebody else in this sin. It is the two of us. <laughs> it's okay for us to sin because we are the two of us, but don't add another one. And many of us are not upset because of what is being done. We are upset because somebody else is involved. We have a Christian face. So on Sunday, pastor says, how are you doing? And say, hallelujah, the Lord is with us. Uh, traditionally, you know, you know, uh, and these are some of the traditions we have. The traditional African man will say, you can't have one woman. And we know, you know, and, and some of us will have this running joke that you will only know how many children you are when your father dies. And they all pop up during the funeral. You look at this guy, you're like, ah, this is photocopy. We can't even argue. <laughs> this one is ours. And it has <laughs> happened for several, several families that suddenly they check out. And they realize, hey, we were four <laughs> up to yeah. up to D Day. Right now we are we are 15. And so you, because the traditional man is said, you know, and, and we buy this with, and as I say, we have a we have a traditional heart and a secular mind. Uh, our heart tells us, you know what, a man cannot be satisfied with one woman. What about when she's pregnant? And in some cultures, it's even upheld. I will not mention, but there are cultures where when you're spouse is pregnant, they bring in a relative or a sister, a younger sister to stay with you. So that even if you spill the beans, they are not going to be spilled outside the family. And it is known when that little girl comes to the home, this is what we are doing. It is practiced both with the Christians and the non-Christians in that culture, because when culture speaks, we all stop and listen. Mm. We have a secular mind. Our thinking around what is acceptable and what is not acceptable in terms of sex, in terms of proximity, in terms of how many partners is not determined by what scripture says. In fact, many of us look for loopholes in scripture and say, ah, even the Bible, David had how many? Ah, in fact, Solomon, the wisest man that lived, 700 wives and 300 concubines, listening to Mark speaking about this last week. Well, I think it was Shalom you're mentioning. You know, a whole year, a whole how many years can three, you go? Three without, years. Three years, no repeat. <laughs> you know, and, and the guys are like, Sasa na msisi mbona sisi tunafungiwa. Where this, this gospel that came to bring us freedom, wasn't it supposed to open and break the chains? And then you are told, no, it is one man, one wife. Adam, it was Adam and Eve, not Adam and Eve and Catherine and Sheila and Sharon. It was just the two of them. And God predestined that as a divine order. But our minds tell us, no, 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 no. You shag over here, shag over there. You know, don't don't be too uptight. <laughs> uh, you've you've ri risen up the ranks. When you are young, you know, Mark. When you are young and single and broke, you know, even <laughs> you know, sometimes money is what makes you look good. So now you start looking good. The girls are running and falling over you now, and then you are saying, "At your wait for just this one wife," and that is another mistake that happens. People begin to think, "Now that I have the money, I can compensate." For the years the kankawam had stolen. Yeah? Why? Because your mind is secular. You're thinking the more money I have, the more the women. You're not saying, how do I make this marriage stronger? So here we are with a Christian face, <laughs> a traditional heart, and a secular mind. Where do we go? <laughs> uh -huh. Where do we go? Is there a place to go really? Yes, there is a place to go. Mm -hmm. But do we want to go? <laughs> you know, somebody says, uh, uh, we, we, when you grow up, it's very exciting when you're a kid to say, when I grow up. And then you grow up and realize, ah, man, it's a cheat. Then <laughs> I should have stayed a child. <laughs> it's a lie. Yes, now I have responsibilities. Now I have to, I have to show up. I have to pay <laughs> the bills. I enjoyed the days when I just walked into a restaurant, placed an order, put on the hat, and laughed and ate and drank, and nobody had to tell me anything about what who is going to pay. Mm. Now here I am, and I'm an adult. I'm told, uh, you know, after 18, I can be taken to a court of law, and I can't call my mom. Mm. So responsibility, yes, is given to us, but I mean, freedom is given to us, but it comes with responsibility. 
So we don't want to grow. So you find a guy who is in his 40s behaving like a 15 year old, you know, chasing down girls, you know, and, and of course midlife crisis doesn't help in the mid 40s. Uh, you now feel, hey, I have to compensate. I'm about to die. <laughs> I need to eat the world before, <laughs> before I hit the sack. So yeah. you, you're you're pushing yourself on all fronts. And we've seen this in some form, very popular guys in this country. Eh? I will not mention names, but we all know who I'm pointing to. <laughs> and, and they were everyone's, every woman's dream. And every, because they have the money, they have the influence, they have the wherewithal to give you a khaki for one night. And we forget that we are raising another generation that I tell people, your permission, your permissiveness or what you permit becomes principle for the next generation. Mm. What I say, oh, you know, because I have money, I can pay for this mistake. Or because I have my, my authority and freedoms, I can do this. Oh, because I have my money, I can buy my beer and I know how to control my bottle. Your child doesn't know you're controlling your bottle. Your child knows you are drinking, period. The day yeah. they get that bottle, they will down it. Why? Because now it is a principle. This is how a man behaves. A man takes a bottle and drinks. For you, it was a permissive step. You are saying, you know what? I have liberty to do this, but I also have controls. For your child, they are saying, when you become a man, a bottle must be next to you when you're having a conversation that is serious, that is manly. Uh, when you become a man, an extra woman on the side becomes the, the modus operandi because now, how will people know you are a man when you have only one woman? You need to manage a harem like Solomon. <laughs> and so what we are saying to ourselves in, in the thought that we are just saying to me, we are actually preparing principle for our children. Mm. So in your child, <laughs> I remember dealing with a parent who asked, how do I, how do I deal with my son? We are we going to compete bringing girls into the house? Now the son realized I can I have shortcuts to the principle. I don't have to move out of home. So the dad has been bringing women left, right, center into the house. I don't know where the mom is. I think she's in shags or something. So the dad is just the son realized ah Kumbe being a man is bringing women. He didn't even look for his own house, <laughs> father's house. He are in this bedroom, he is in the next bedroom. Uki on doa na on doa. Uki letter ni na letter. Uki shukisha ni na shukisha. So the father is so disturbed by the son's behavior that he doesn't even know that he is the source of the behavior. And, mm -hmm. and, and the person, you're looking at the person and you're like, how do I break it to you that your son is, is made in your very image and likeness? <laughs> it's only he God just who made <laughs> he's, he's just perfected what you have been practicing yeah. and at a cheaper account he doesn't even need a roof over his head he's using your roof <laughs> so those those are the questions we need to ask ourselves what are we building what are we giving to the next generation that is where we start because if we were the last generation, and I will tell you this, if we were the last generation to walk the earth, then be what you want to be, do what you want to do. There is nobody who is learning from you. But if we are not the last generation walking the face of this earth, and one day we will be those old people who we cannot even come out of the bed by ourselves, as the Bible says, yeah? <laughs> honor God when you are young, because days are coming when you will want to sit in the sun and they will leave you in the room. You will want to be in the room and they'll leave you in the sun. You will want to wear a, a t-shirt and they will put a sweater on you. Before those days come, prepare your children for what heritage you want to have from them. Because one day, now they are going to inherit from you. Then you will inherit from them. <laughs> so that is where we are at. We have to ask ourselves difficult questions and expect difficult answers in and of ourselves. Unless yeah. we are ready to yeah. ask ourselves those questions, we will not examine ourselves. We will not inquire what this means. We, many of us are even afraid to just ask, what does the next generation think about us? The closest we had was Ifikie Wazazi. Tukash, tukaye tuyote. 
because the kids told us, we know. And we are doing what you have done. Namu meshtuka, you know, you've put us on the headlines, you know, uh, the WhatsApp groups that Chama Zimenda on, on, on over, over drivers. All the parents are shouting about what the children are doing. Yeah. But then we ask, who set the bar? And that was a, the, the subject of the conversation that came from my write-up about Shafiweru and DJ, DJ Mfalme and uh, what's the other guy when they were kicked out of, of Jumbo Radio because of their statements. But they are not the first guys to make those statements. They are recipients of a heritage that has come probably 20 years down the line. The FM stations, Kiss FM, uh, Jumbo, Radio Jumbo, uh, Hot 96, those radio stations, look at how old they are. They are all in their young adult years now. They're around 19, 20, 21, 22 years old. Those AM uh, uh, shows with Akina Mutoko, Caroline Mutoko, you know this generation, you are seeing Caroline Mutoko from another side. You as we saw part A. <laughs> you guys are seeing part C. You're seeing the, 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 the you know, if you are to look at her in terms of the writings of, Sol of, Sol of Solomon, uh, you're looking at Ecclesiastes. She's now telling people vanity of vanities, chasing after the wind, <laughs> to the building of houses, to, to the reading of books. She's speaking at that stage. She has seen it all, done it all. But if you had her, you had Akina Mwalimu Kengangi, you had Akina, uh, what is this, the, the women's rep? Uh, <laughs> what's his name? Uh, what's the name of this guy? He's one of the most long serving radio personalities. Uh, uh, how can I forget his name? Mark is one who knows them. Mark. Maina Kagani. Maina. Maina Kageni. Oh. Those guys have been the preachers of, thank you, thank you, John. Those are guys have been the preachers of what family looks like for the last three, two decades. Those are your pastors. Every day from 5 a.m. to 7 to 8 to 9 a.m., you are listening to Malimu Kingang, you are listening to Caroline Mutoko, you are listening to Maina Kageni for two hours in the traffic jam, you are talking Kitengela, three hours if you are coming from, from, uh, <laughs> from uh, what is this place? It's Yokimau or Kitengela, three hours. You've listened to this guy, someone. You hear your pastor for one hour. Once a week, Kibbe. and even Kibbe. for that one, you doze off. And then you are telling me, "Oh, pastor, my marriage is struggling." I'm like, "Your pastor has been Shafiweru for the last." <laughs> He's the guy you listen to every morning, every morning, faithfully. And then you are shocked that you can't, you don't believe your wife when she turns around to the corner that she's faithful because all you hear is, "Mwana you're looking, you know, when you are seeing to have a to hold for richer, for poorer, for better, for worse, your script in your head was just playing. Kengangi, 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 Motoko, Motoko, Chapi, Chapi, Mfalme. And then now you want to provide biblical counsel and say, I trust. Nobody in those FM stations speaks about trust. They don't. They don't speak about hoping against all hope. They don't speak about being faithful, enduring, even when that secretary has confused your head until you go to work even on Sunday, because you just want to be where she was on Saturday. And she's not even at work, but you just want to be, to see her desk. In the midst of that confusion, if you don't have the scripture, if you don't have the foundation, my friend, and then it forms into a habit and your kids, I tell people there are three people who know everything that happens in this world. It's not the police. It is your children, it is the watchmen, and it is the house helps. Uh, if you ongeze a tigal pale ko ofisi, atakusaidia sana. Those are the guys who have four and one for what goes on in that office. Who is that thing? Who, who is about to be fired? Who is getting promoted? Who <laughs> lost the biggest deal? <laughs> They know it, but they keep quiet because we, they, are not, they are below our, our, our class. We don't ask them questions. 
So if you think those kids don't know, they know. If you think <laughs> those, you can, you're the only, you're the only, you're the only king who knows you are dressed up. The rest of the world knows you are naked. <laughs> you're the emperor. <laughs> yeah, you're the emperor. You're the one who is who is who is the suit. The rest of us are like, oh, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a bit revealing, but that is where we are, and we have had the gospel of the FM stations. And now, this is the first generation that now is bearing fruit. Mm. The fruit of those 20 years of listening to those guys over and over, day after day. You go into a matatu and guys will argue with you to stay on that channel. If you're lucky to have your own private vehicle, some of us are still so dedicated. We had already been indoctrinated when we were in the matatu. You remember that channel and you tune in. Uh, now we are not listening to Nameless and Nonini, uh, who are singing about Friday night. It's Furahi Day. Those were very honest songs. Today we are listening to Genge, mm -hmm. Genge mm -hmm. tune, where there is no even relationship. It's not even that, oh, girl, I love you. It's Geuza, Tingiza, Ingiza, Chapa, Chapa, Ilale, eh, hey, Bas. That is, that, is, that is all romances to this generation because 20 some years, those parents have raised their children who are after their own heart. Mm -hmm. They have no idea what it means to relate to a woman. So when we are telling them, you know, we are doing a Bible study and telling your kids, how do you stay pure? They are like, <laughs> why, why are you struggling? Why? What's your problem? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why are you struggling? You know that is that is their that is their default because they are like, my father does not struggle. Yeah, my mother uh, has learned to perfect the art of making my father believe she is just waiting for him. I don't even bring my friends home because Baba kikuja patem chana kwa nyumba. Ah. Hanging. And so we are now dealing with a whole two decades of the mm -hmm. dumbing down of family, the dumbing down of marriage, the dumbing down of a community mm -hmm. that is supposed to be healthy. So what can we do? Yeah. We, we have to rewrite the narrative. And rewriting a narrative is so difficult because it's like changing the course of a river. That is why we need Christ. That is why we need the grace of God. That is why we need all the prayers. You know, you know those, those, those prayers that Paula White was praying for the, the, the angels of Africa to go to America. Because Pali Tuko, we need all those angels at work in this continent mm. and in this country. Because we have dug such a deep hole, we are now seeing the offshoots. COVID-19 just became the, the can that covered the pot until it blew up. And now left, right, center. Now we are seeing the reality. Now we are, we are hearing the stories and social media allows us to be able to encounter these things in a larger perspective than before. We are seeing it. So we mm. need to ask ourselves, what do we do? How do we rewrite a script that has been 20 years in the making? Yeah. So let's just start by defining what exactly is monogamy. You know, because monogamy. I mean, does it mean does it mean that if if I I hooked up with one guy, I can never hook up with another one again? Is it mm. okay for it to be one at a time? I mean, like, what exactly is monogamy? If if oh. I hooked up with a loser at the beginning of my life, you know, I was young mm. and stupid and nineteen. Mm. And I agreed and got married to this guy. And so by the time I'm 25, really, I, I need to move on and we divorce. Mm. You know, what exactly yeah. is monogamy? Think, this monogamy that we keep saying people need to be monogamous. Monogamy is a theory. <laughs> Just put it there. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's yeah. become a theory. Mm -hmm. um, it has its, its roots in scripture. It has its roots in many African traditions. Mm -hmm. It has its roots in many Western cultures, all right? In fact, it is the ideal in almost every uh, 
tradition that you would look at. Uh, uh, the book of uh, Song of Songs is a book that is written in a monogamous stage. Mm -hmm. Come away with me, my love. Fairest among them all. There is none beautiful, you know, like you. Your eyes are like doves. You know, your hair is like the flock of, of, of uh, Jerusalem running down the mountains. Your neck hey. is like the towers <laughs> of... Yani, that guy was smitten and it was done. He knew who he loved and he was smitten by her. Mm. That is monogamy. When Solomon is writing that, uh, historians say he was writing from the experience of his first love. Mm -hmm. What happened after that is what his father had warned him, is what the priests had warned him and said, be careful that when the Lord has settled you, that you do not begin to take foreign wives you do not, uh, because you, you, are, you are pursuing everything your heart desires. Because in, what will happen is that now you will begin, your heart will be, will be lured away from following the Lord and you will begin to worship other gods to please your wives. So when Solomon is writing songs of songs, he is that young smitten, you know that 19 year old, Mm -hmm. You know, because I have 19 year old, most eligible bachelor, king in waiting, met this Shulamite one, woman who has the right skin color, has the right hair. And you see the descriptors. Even you, you're like, hey, Jehovah, this guy found a, a baby. Then, instead of being satisfied with her, he begins to seek. And, and two things led Solomon in that direction. One, the, the covetousness of, 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 of this world, where why should I spare myself for one woman when I'm so handsome, when I'm so brilliant, and they come running. Two is the desire to form alliances with other nations. And that's why she, he married an Egyptian, married a Syrian, married a different, different nationalities. Because in those days, you are either fighting alone and you are strong, or you married into another nation and you became related by marriage. So that whenever you are, your relatives are being attacked, you defend them. When you are being attacked, your relatives defend you. So because now his trust for God had declined because he has been lured away by these women, he ends up forming alliances with his neighbors so that if the Lord, perhaps if the Lord does not come through, I have plan B. I have Syria in my pocket because Syria, Nimoa Mstana Wakim. I have Assyria in my pocket because in Assyria, Pia, I have Babylon in my pocket because the Babylonians know if we get attacked, we are in, we, they are also in trouble. Their relative will be killed. And so our trust in his trust in God that got compromised is what led him to polygamy. But the ideal was this monogamous relationship. I have not met a person who is in a happy, comfortable, contented polygamous relationship. In fact, many of my friends who have been raised in polygamous families tell you, my friend, you don't know the drama. You, you think you guys had issues with monogamy. Polygamy has multiple layers of issues. Just look at the story of, just look at the story of, uh, of uh, Sarah and, and Hagar. And how just a house help being told this idea, mama kupata mtoto, which was a traditional and acceptable thing in those days. Look at the drama it causes. The moment the woman becomes pregnant, pembe, eh. <laughs> and, and suddenly she's like, yeah, me, I'm the one who is having the baby anyway. Kidogo Sarah, who is supposed to have been very happy that she's expecting a child, begins to feel, we are nanionesha madarao. Nikiona bila nanyangalia, nikama naona Abraham, mimi na wewe, I'm like, how did that turn so fast? You, and if you read even the stories in scripture of those who had other wives, um, who was the other, uh, and, and how, you know, um, yes, Samuel's, Samuel's mother, you know, when, when they're going to pray and she's like, how can I be happy when I don't have to? The husband has even given her a double portion. But she's like, how can this satisfy me? The husband says, it's okay. You are okay. You are... But it's like the other woman has other kids. 
And you know, I am not worthy. So there are so many dynamics in there that we don't even bargain for. But you know what? Fools rush in. Yeah. Mm. I want to throw something else because yeah. most of the examples we have mm. are of uh, the women being, you know, like you said, they're the ones who grow the mm. horns and cause the drama. Mm. Do you think, and this is just me throwing it out there, do you think it would be better if the women were the ones having extra men? Maybe women know how to manage guys better than guys know how to manage women. Would there be mm. less drama? <laughs> Uh, because I mean, and I'm asking is, this on behalf yeah. of our young girls who are saying to come mm. and play that game. You know, I mean, right now they have seen men frustrated women, and you know, you're using women all over. So now mm. they've decided, you know what? Why don't we do it the other way? This monogamy thing is not about just men, you know, doing this thing with many women. How about I, the chick, playing the fields? Is that it's okay? Called poly it's called polyandry. It's there. Polyandry. Yeah, polyandry. Yes. Yeah. Polyandry. Mm -hmm. Has... Might, that, might, might that solve our societal problems? <laughs> it, had, it had a very short success story. <laughs> it had a shorter success story than polygamy. Uh -huh. Because you just picture the narrative of, of men. Picture the narrative of men in one house. Mm -hmm. No, you don't keep just... them in one house. The... <laughs> Just think of yeah, even even if they don't have, they're not in one house, just them mm -hmm. meeting, mm. uh, <laughs> and trying to have a conversation about how we are all together with one wife, with the yeah. kind of with the kind of 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 uh, and not, I know like I think in the Kalenjin culture, they have that in the Kikuyu also they have that where a woman would marry a man, uh, and it's it's her husband. It's not. Um, uh, he he's not a second wife mm. <laughs> to him or a wife to him. She is married to him, mm. and she brings him in for whatever reason. And I and I think there's a time there was a feature like this on TV uh, that was done about a Kalenjin woman who has married this man and taken care of him. Uh, many times, in most occasions, it is very rare and uh, very very unique mm -hmm. uh the woman has to be very high society and you know like you're saying they have to they can't be in the same house yeah they can't you can't have them in the same house and and i think it's it took off and failed very fast <laughs> i don't think there's many cultures where that is even a perception mm -hmm. uh now what is happening is what we call uh uh what is what is that word poly poly what Poly polyamory polyamory yeah where this women this woman has many men um just like the man has many women mm. um and we have no restrictions as to how many partners i can have sexually i have a husband but then a uba ananilea kidogo ule ripale pia boswangu so you have these men who are strewn all over to meet your liberated woman's need. Mm. Because your liberated man is also having his need met by one secretary here, you know, uh, a good neighbor who is single who moved into the estate. And so we feel uh, two can play this game. And that there was a movie that was done about, uh, about that, eh? two can play the game. Because the African American woman figured, you know what, if a guy can cheat, Ah, the school, we can go and mm. we can learn. And in fact, we can educate him because him, he doesn't know how to keep secrets. We can do a secret for the next 10 years. And you, you see how that, actually that movie was a cultural uh, shifting conversation. Mm -hmm. and, and many times you will notice when a culture is shifting, there is either a champion, a person who stands up and it does the unthinkable. And everyone is like, what on earth is that? But because they have done it, people begin to say, by the way, it's doable, right? And mm -hmm. so when they did two can play the game, it was basically the black American women or the liberation movement in that sense that said, you know what? Let's flatten the game. 
Mm. We already have the pill, which makes sure that a woman doesn't get pregnant every time. Uh, so we are not struggling with the same inhibitions of the women of the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. We can play this game and come out unscathed. Yeah. We can keep secrets better than the men. So where are you? You have forgotten to cancel the text, delete the text. This lady does a, a forensic audit of all her numbers, all her conversations. Mm. You will never know. And mm. so mm. the narrative gets shifted. Two can play that game did that. Right now, we are dealing with a, a, a cultural shift when it comes to the gay movement. And I know we'll have a conversation about this. Uh, Lil Nas X does this song where he's dancing, doing a lap dance on a on, a, on, on the devil in the Garden of Eden. What has he combined? Our religious beliefs and taboos around the conversation. He has gone against our cultural taboos about, um, about what is acceptable sexually. He has spoken for a generation that does not want to fall back on this traditional thing of religion or culture and he has defined it. Guys have thrown their voices behind him. His video has trended for the last couple of weeks. Why? He's a cultural shifter. He has shifted, he has shifted something. And we, we will watch from here now. Guys are becoming more, the, the gay movement becomes more confident. Why? Because somebody has stood on one of the biggest platforms, which is the entertainment industry. Somebody mentioned Hollywood and has done something that was unthinkable. Our most secular of artists, Michael Jackson, you know, pick all those guys who are icons, mm -hmm. could never portray themselves as gay openly like that. And this and the secret religious uh, narratives, the way Lil Nas X has done it. And so <laughs> he has done it. So we are now watching the next phase which is now the normalization of many other things that come with the gay movement. But mm. coming back to us in polygamy, monogamy, polyandry, polyamory, <laughs> and all these other, all these things um, have found their feet at one point or another. But they normally have a lot of very stringent measures around. For you to have a polygamous family, it has to have, so as in the discipline around it, is so high that you, you almost feel like, you know what, let me just be monogamous. Mm. There were requirements that the man must have. In fact, not by, the, not by your family. It was a cultural requirement. How wealthy are you? Yeah. How responsible yeah. have you been with your first wife? Give us evidence that you have satisfied every need your spouse has before you bring in a second. What is your wife's consent about the second one? Is she in on it? Is she knowing that you are just playing around and you're just, you're just polyamorous? You're not serious about bringing in a wife who is going to be a co-worker, a co-helper to her. Mm. Are you going to provide for the children equally? By the time you go through that list, you're like, okay, I am not ready. <laughs> so they, and, and there was a discipline around it. There was a process to which you had to apply to go through for you to have that second or third or fourth wife. We yeah. don't have yeah. that discipline. Our idea of polygamy is we were Kwanza Ame Chapa, Ananisumba. Ame mea pembe. Ame mea pembe. Haleti vitu. Wacha ni tafte wapili, wakubambisha maisha. And then you despise the first and go to the second. We were pili amekuja, amekuja na I am the mover and the shaker. I am the now showing. I am the, you know, billboards. The the next, next coming soon. She comes in, brings her drama. You know, the guy is untouchable. The first wife has been taken to shags. The children have suffered. The lifestyle has changed. Then, while you are still happy in your honeymoon, a third one checks in. Now, this one is not even being brought to the house. We are Melipi and Nyumba Pale. And I she Roy Sambo because I hear Roy Sambo is very popular. And then now you begin to be left. And so <laughs> you look at the, the, the framework that could be able to uphold a polygamous marriage 
is lacking in our generation. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, like, if I look, you know, like when you mentioned about the process of getting mm. the second wife into the third wife, etc. Mm. Um, there are people who it has worked very, very well. Mm. I mean, there, there are places, Islam community, for instance, is guide, is allowed, yes, yes to have mm -hmm. the extra, the, the four wives and all. And yeah. I've met kids who prefer those stepmothers than their own mothers. So they're in mm. a polygamous relationship. Yeah. They're actually relating better with this other woman. Than their mother. Than their mother. Mm. So is there a place where, like, if we actually went back to teaching polygamy properly, you know, and, mm. and go back to the stringent ways of allowing polygamy to happen, would it sort this thing out? <laughs> That's why I said structures. Already monogamy is <laughs> already monogamy is suffering. Yeah. Bitter blues. Yeah. <laughs> monogamy yeah. is, is under duress. Mm. Just one good man, one good woman coming together and living faithfully. Why? Because we have a Christian face, secular mind, and okay. traditional heart. heart yeah. So mm. we are behaving like villagers who are irresponsible because we also don't want to be held accountable. That is why. Your parents or your uncles cannot call you up and say, how are you treating your wife? Because we have, we have discarded those structures. Yeah. We have discarded, the pastor cannot tell you, and I can tell you this for free. I have dealt with cases where you, a couple comes to you and they have, they have had their fight or their disagreement or they are going through a season. And they come and they, of normally it's the wife who is normally willing to seek counsel. Uh, men, we, we die, we die, we die, uh, we die solo. You know, we die like men. We don't wear safety belts. And so this thing of coming to call at your pastor, come and talk to us, is a taboo. And so because a pastor cannot in, in vo enforce himself to it, um, we have to pull back. And so yes. this guy will come. And after you've finished your counseling, you've done your best, you've encouraged them, you have corrected what was wrong, you have rebuked who needed to be rebuked, you've told people, they leave the house or the office, and on the way back home, the guy tells the wife, so you've told the pastor, what can he do? Mm. And the truth is, you know what, uh, the only thing that I know I can do is maybe get Mark, pick a few other huge guys in church, Chill for this guy one evening when he comes home and starts near time. We beat him with a GSU. You know, that is the only thing that is left for a pastor to do. And after that, we tell him, you take us to court. We will, we will deal with police. Yeah. But you see, we don't have that. Now, in the traditional culture, you beat up your wife. They sent, they sent their, their brothers, her brothers. Mm -hmm. And they didn't send the, young, the, the little brothers. They sent brothers who had been working in the shamba. They come and tell you, tunasikia unachafa mtoto wetu, dada yetu. Baba amesema, kama kuna shida, ukuje umuambie. The second time you do that, the third time, they will come and descend on you. And you will be called and your parents will be summoned because they also your father also reports to his father. They will be summoned and whether you like it or not, whether you are CEO of Econet or Diamond Trust or you, know, you are the CES of which ministry, you will have to show up because you, you owe it to your family to honor your father when he summons you. Mm. Your father, your mm. father-in-law come and sit you down and say, this is the first and last time we are hearing this. They even had fines. They say you give three cows or one, one heifer to the mother of the girl because you have dishonored her. She did a yeah. good job to raise yeah. this woman. After that, the next time they are doing, and this the Maasai culture is amazing. They say when you're being, when they are doing the eldership thing, which happens once in 20 years, if mm. all your wife needs to do is not come and put her hands on your head when that moment the elders ask, has this man been faithful? Has he been providing? Has he been protecting? Has he been a good man to your you to you? Has been be a good father to your children? In front of the whole culture. And if you miss that chance to become an elder, then guess what? You have 20 years to wait. Let me tell you, grown Maasai men who killed lions cry on that day. Because you will not push 
at you, oh, I know, I know, I know the CS. Oh, I can call a number. I know a guy. There's no, I know a guy. It's your wife and your honor and dignity for the next 20 years. Mm. But do we have that in most of our cultures? No. Do we have that in church? Do we have the ability to discipline and excommunicate and rebuke and even go to the extent of saying, man, you will sit here and you will obey what we say or we will beat you up. We don't have that as a child. And so yeah, and I'm feeling that. as though the reason why we've lost that as a church is because we have lost the moral authority. We still have the spiritual authority. Mm. So our faith is still Christian. Yeah. But because our hearts and minds became something else, then mm. we no longer have that authority. Because, mm. I mean, there's no way the pastor can go finessing other people's mamas on the side, and then they are coming and saying, and trying to admonish a guy who has done the same thing. There's no way a pastor can this. be threatening because of his position. <laughs> you get, because of his position, he threatens this chick, you know, or he, he spiritually mm. manipulates them mm. and sort of makes them feel as though God will not answer their prayers if they do not, you know. There was a rabbi, yeah. I think, who had holy semen and he managed to impregnate <laughs> God knows how many women because his semen was holy. You know, I mean, when you have such a person leading, how, how, what hope do we have? I mean, we go shouting, oh yeah, you know, the church is the hope of the world and all those other things. And then we mm. see these great leaders being brought down by sex. I mean, as in, and that's why yes. I, I, I would like this conversation about sex because we underestimate its power. And we, um, yeah. I feel as though as we are in, underestimating the power of sex, we also underestimate mm. the power of God. Exactly. We yeah. trivialize, so how, we've how trivialized we, the yeah. sacred things. Mm -hmm. we, we are a very irreverent generation. Mm. Um, and we trivialize what is sacred and make sacred what is trivial. Yeah. We do this, we, we've, we've looked at God and said, does God know? You know that and these things are in scripture. Eh? Does mm. the Holy One have knowledge? <laughs> Mm. When he says this is good for you, when he says it's not good for man to be alone, who said? Yeah. Why does he have authority to say to me that this is what is good? Who said I have to have one wife only? And even if I have one wife, who says I have to be monogamous? Mm. Who gave them the right? Mm -hmm. And so we trivialize what is sacred. Sex is probably one of the most sacred acts possible between two human beings of the opposite sex. It is so sacred that in very, very dark cults and, and, uh, and, and religions, they had temple prostitutes, people to perform sex with as part of worship. And the moment you entangle yourself with that prostitute, you have offered worship of your body to this God. Mm. That was the God at Thames, uh, of the Ephesians. Those are uh, the, the, the Olympia. And the, the, the symbol of Olympia is a, is a naked guy bowing down. Uh, the Agora in, in, in uh, Corinth uh, was a wall where they had put, you know, they, they had you know, a wall where they had put all these prayer items. Uh, where it was like a wailing wall. What was it yeah. all about? People bringing their prayers to a God and their prayer was for their genitals and everything to perform better. <laughs> very dark, secular things. When you hear Paul talking about Corinth and saying a man has his wife, his father's wife, it was such a dark, dirty place that to be called Corinthian was a worse insult than to be called a slut. Mm. That is how bad it was. That is how vulgar and vile it was. And that is why you see this culture of the city coming into the church. And Paul had to deal with so many cases, crazy cases, cases that even now we cannot even talk about because um, they trivialized what was sacred. And let me tell you, if you want to know what a generation thinks, about its future, if you want to know what a generation thinks 
about family, if you want to know what that generation thinks about being human, look at how they treat sexuality. Mm -hmm. the, moment you, the, the moment you see a culture that values, protects, and up, upholds the sacredness and, and sanctity of sex, which is the whole conversation around marriage, which is the whole conversation about upbringing of children. That's the only thing that is guarded from us. Think about it. That is the only thing that is guarded from us when it comes to relationships with anyone around us. Mm -hmm. That is the one thing that when it's breached, people say, you have abused me. You have broken a barrier. That is the only thing that... Because conversation, I can sit with my boss and speak until 3 a.m. I can sit with my girlfriend and pray the whole night. We can sit, the, you can study the Bible from Genesis to Revelation without going home with your boyfriend or girlfriend. You can go for road trips from here to South Africa and back. You can drive a pickup, you can walk on foot. It doesn't matter. The only thing that has a caveat around it is not how much you pray, is not what you read, is not where you go, is not what you talk about. It is how you treat each other physically, the sexual experience. That is the one thing that you are told by the pastor, wait until the day. That is the only thing that we unlock as pastors. You say now, and the two have become one. Is of true or false? True. Yeah, true. That is why it is and, and I think even we, we talked a bit about this last week. That's part mm. of the problem. Mm. Because when we are talking about that sex, that do not mm. have sex, do not have sex, yeah. walk to South Africa and back and whatever. Yeah. We don't talk about what you're feeding the mind. Somebody here commented in the chat that it all starts with Hollywood. If I'm feeding mm -hmm. my mind a certain thing, yeah. then what chance do I have? There's a series I've been watching Mm. on Netflix called uh, Ginny and Georgia mm. about a young lady got her daughter when she was 15 and now the daughter is 15 you know and they're just going mm. through life and everything else yeah. and my opinion of that particular show mm. is that it is grooming 15 year old girls on mm. everything sexual mm. right so here is a pastor saying do not have sex but here is a show that's showing kids how to enjoy everything mm. well for some yes go ahead and have sex for others you know this is mm. how to masturbate this is how to do this mm. and the other and so pastors are very busy saying guard this one thing do not have sex mm. and then somebody else is coming and telling our kids by the way yeah don't have sex you're a nice christian girl but do mm. everything else up until here mm. after all if you do this then you'll still be a virgin at the point when you're getting married and you will make your parents happy you know mm. yeah practice how will people know you know whatever they they and, and that, that. Is, and huh? and that is that is why mm. there's a whole ritual there's a whole training there's a whole discipline around this sacred thing yeah and that yeah. The, the moment we understand that and, and and let me tell you it's the apex and that is why our biggest struggle is this thing mm. because at the end of the day truth be told <laughs> Every guy who is planning to get married has sex at the top of their mind. Not at the corner, not in the side, not it's here. Yeah. Upper belly. Eh, upper As in, if you remove sex, I, a guy is like, I'm in a big around it too. It's okay. <laughs> company. <laughs> I can do company out there. I don't have to get married. Mm. It is that intimacy, the sexual intimacy. We have tried to, and that's what I'm saying, we've made it, we've trivialized it. And the, more, the one thing that we always do when we want to mess up with something, is cheaper. If I want to, to take advantage of you, the first thing is to say you're not worth much. The moment you, the moment I begin to dehumanize you or lower your value, I can now do with you anything I want to do. In fact, they say in most, the reason why slavery worked is because they said Africans are not human beings. They are just a developed ape. The moment guys had that, they were ready to take any any African, put them in the field, beat them up like they beat a cow and not feel any sense of judgment or guilt yeah. because they have proven to themselves in their thinking that the man is not, these men are not human. 
Mm. And so the moment we want to, to of abuse something, we trivialize it. We take sex and say, Kwani, what's so big about sex? It's just an experience. You know, uh, why should I wait until marriage? You know, uh, why shouldn't I masturbate? You know, why shouldn't I watch porn? Why shouldn't I, you know, uh, get together and just, you know, just catch rubs with, with this guy who I like? Because suddenly it has taken the sense that it is just a fun thing to do. But if it's such an, a light and trivial thing, why is it that when somebody touches you inappropriately, it is such a huge, huge thing. If I, if I touch your shoulder, you will, you will probably just feel, ah, he was probably saying hi. If I touch your back, you'll probably just think, well, he was trying to get my attention. But the moment I touch anything that is so related to sex, the breast, it doesn't matter whether I was praying for you. It's like, ah, I feel violated. Why? Because it is connected to something that you guard. And that is why the moment women begin to feel they are being taken advantage of sexually, it just throws them off. The moment a woman gives herself to a man or a man to a woman, there's a sense of you owe me more than just fair. <laughs> and no, no, no wonder we, we, can, we can argue about, oh, CG, I'm a cool affair, I'm a cool affair. But the reason why I'm a cool affair is because they wanted you to be more than fair, but you are not listening. Yeah. And yeah. this thing, and, and there is no woman who will say they don't think about this. There is no man who will, I mean, except where we have so perverted that we just feel this is, this is a, a, a it, it, you know, it's copulation, you know, copulation. Yeah. That is, the, by the time your mind gets to that place, that it is, it is just responding to, to natural instinct. That is the only time you can be able to isolate this experience from a very intimate, very personal, very guarded, very sacred thing. And we know it. And that is why when rape happens, we are so broken because it has touched something that you feel you owe it to only one person. And in fact, that person has to earn it. It is that sacred. Yeah. That is why yeah. God put those private parts in a very hidden place so that you sneeze away to care. Oops, they mean, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't, it, it, it was not the plan. It was put in a place where you have to hustle to get there because by the time I get to that place with a woman, she has to have permitted me and I have to have accepted that permission. So we have to think, why is this thing so important? Because the moment we don't think it's important, we trivialize it, but then you, we can never negate the power of a bullet. Yeah. You can say it's a small gun. You can say, oh, I have had many people shoot, but the reality is the moment that thing is pulled, it doesn't matter whether it was friendly fire or unfriendly fire, whether it was a Shabab fire or police fire, that gun will shoot you and mm. it will hurt mm. you. Mm. And we are seeing, now we are seeing the fruit of the heart of being trivial about our sexuality. Our children are bearing the fruit of our triviality about our sexuality. They're beginning to try out because they think it's a reality, but it's hurting them because they're like, no. <laughs> Now, let me, let, 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 me, let me interrupt you right there. Here I am. I haven't mm. been monogamous. Mm. My child just uh, turned 16, 17, 18, somewhere there. In fact, mm. let's call it 18. Yeah. yeah. And they're thinking, yay, now I have the license. Mm -hmm. In fact, somebody, somebody on the group, the Dare to Be Parenting group, reminded us yeah. that there's something called unregulated companionship. Mm. which is neither regulated by law nor by societal expectation. Yes. So this, this monogamy thing can even get other names, right? Mm -hmm. So now tell me, here I am, I have not been monogamous, mm. uh, but now I'm changing my mind. I've, I've already now gone through, I've reached the place where I need to write my ecclesiastes. Uh -huh. How do I, as a modern parent today, mm. tell my kids, uh, you know what, eh? Based on my experience, I think uh, you need to do this slightly differently. Yes. How do I help my kids not have that Christian face, 
but anyway, our kids don't have traditional hats. They just have that thing that you said, what we have permitted is becoming their principle. Mm. You know, but so their, their hats are basically becoming principled. But then how do we remove just having the Christian face? And mm. even if, uh, let's go, Christianity, I feel, is the solution, right? Mm. But right yes. now, Christianity has even hurt our own children. Mm. And this kid is coming and saying, you have messed up and the church is allowing you to do this. I've got a boy who told me, stop talking to me about finessing, first talk to my dad. And this was in a church setting. Mm. So how yeah. then do I tell these kids, even if this is what has happened, this is what you need, this is the direction you need to be going. How do I explain the consequence of my actions mm. to a kid, well, to my kid? That is why- Because I want them to do it different, yeah. Yes. Mm. And I hear you. And this is, I think, the struggle of many, many parents today, mm. because we begin to look back. We had a very interesting conversation with Shalom about uh, our secular artists. And when they begin to grow old and they realize, well, <laughs> you know, those songs I was singing when mm. I was, you know, in my heydays and I'm, you know, like, yeah, the life of the party, you know, um, then you realize your children are not just going to listen to your music, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. You, you sang, uh, you know, Afro pop. Uh, you did your romantic songs, you did your stints in Kani and all those places. And you guys, we had you guys were... laying their jackets for us to walk over our paddle. <laughs> I'm scared. So you're feeling, way, man, I have hit the roof. And you see this, I see this with guys like Steve Harvey now. Uh, you see this with uh, even Caroline Mutoko, now beginning to talk to her child about how to become a woman. Sayo, all the other daughters of Eve, you have taught how to be something else for the last 20 years. And you see the struggle because they say majuto ni mjuku. When Solomon is writing those words, he is not a happy man. That is why he says, here, in, here is the conclusion of the matter when all has been handed. Ecclesiastes 12. Fear God and obey his commands. He, he, and as in all those things he wrote, all those, you know, the white things, all those, like the most brilliant guy in life who has ever lived, answers the question of life and just says, guys, here's the conclusion of the matter. Two things, fear God. <laughs> when God says, wachana na kitu, wacha. Because by the time you realize what has happened, and that is why Ecclesia, uh, Song of Ecclesiastes, which is his last book to write in his old age, what is the key verse? What are the key words in Ecclesiastes? Vanity of vanity. Mm. Chasing after the wind. Yo, tell me vanity. Oh, yani he has coolad girls. He has built for them, not houses. He has built for them palaces. He has Kulad Paka, Queen of Sheba. Sheba, Queen of Sheba went. That's how the Falasha Jews ended up in Ethiopia. Queen of Sheba went for a visit. Because he would spare his heart no pleasure. That is what he says. I spared my heart no pleasure. Everything I wanted, I took. But in his old age, now he says, <laughs> as, uh, when he's writing um, Proverbs, eh, which are the wise saying, he says, my son, pay attention to my words. You know, that's a man who is saying, don't listen to the, don't listen to my actions, listen to my words. Do not let them depart from your heart. Uh, Proverbs chapter four from verse 16. They are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. In keeping them, your servant is protected, is kept safe by keeping this command. He's telling his son, there are things I did that I wish I didn't do. But I'm hoping you will listen to me. You know the way guys used to sing and say, listen to the words, not the voice. Mm -hmm. It's like the voice is a mess. <laughs> if you follow my voice, it's a mess. Just listen to the words. By the time he's writing Ecclesiastes, he's this broken old man who is saying, guys, I got it all wrong. Mm. It, was, it was a waste of my energies. To give my energies, why give your energies to a, to a wayward woman? Why run after a, this kind of a life? Why, why run after boys? Why run after? And you know, all of us have this sense. It comes to us. Apo ka 30, ka 40, ka kenda 45. Unanza ko realize, aki ni, I wasted my life. And you know those yeah. jokes that we have, yeah. eh? those memes over the, eh? your mom has a kabambe and your girlfriend has an iPhone 12 plus. 
and you realize witchcraft is real. The Mugabe sayings, you know? <laughs> and, it's, and it's true. You're like, how did I waste my wealth on fickle things? Because we trivialize, and there is no way you'll buy a girl who you're not sleeping with, an iPhone 12 Pro. Akuna. But the moment you begin to, to, to double with this scene and trivialize this sexuality, you open yourself to nonsense. You literally open yourself to a lot of nonsense that you will look at 10, 20 years from now and realize you walked into foolishness, hung out with foolishness, and you paid the dues of a fool, and now you're bearing the fruit of foolishness. But none of us want to be told that 18, I'm the hottest thing in the city. At 16, I am, I am now showing. You know, the reason why you guys are telling me this is because your breasts are fallen. It's because now you 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 have you, you have hair growing on your face. You know, right now it's not even on the cheeks Double anymore. Gina. It's not coming. You, you know, you walk, you go for a walk and you start sweating. You can't keep up with our generation. The reason why you are refusing us to do these things is because you are tired. But the truth is not so. It's because like Solomon, <laughs> you're telling guys, I've been there, I know. Now, the truth is, it would have been much better for Solomon to have walked in the ways of his father, David, and avoided those pitfalls and looked at what did my dad do wrong? Hey, my dad had 300 wives and concubines, uh, Chesachini. This thing cost, uh, it cost, it brought me to the kingship, but it cost his family Amnon and Tamar's story. It cost his family Absalom's death and uh, rebellion and death, subsequent death. It brought, it brought so much pain in the house of David. It's the one glitch in David's life. Every time we talk about David as a man of after God's own heart, that is one side that we look and we're like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Apa, even being a man after God's own heart does not save you from that. And that's the truth. And that is why yeah. you hear people yeah. talk about pastors going and doing some stuff because being a man after God's own heart doesn't, you still have the responsibility to walk upright. You still have the responsibility to guard your heart, but we don't. Mm. I have a responsibility to give my children a godly heritage. I cannot buy a godly heritage. You have to show it. I have to live it. And yeah. the hardest yeah. thing to do is live a godly life. And unfortunately, we are buying everything for our kids. We are saving everything for our kids. We are educating our kids in the best schools, but we are not giving them a godly heritage. What at Wonesha Mambo? Some of the wealthiest guys in this country are putting their wealth into funds that are guarded by, by trustees because they can't trust the children they bore from their own loins. And the moment they die, you see the turmoil and the cut and the and the dramatics that happen. Some of those families have not used their family land, their family property for 20, 30 years. Their children have grown old without getting the inheritance because they are in court fighting. Why? They invested in their wealth. They invested in providing school fees, providing big homes, providing, you know, uh, net worth for themselves and for their children. And they forgot to give a godly heritage to their children. Those kids, the day they shika that money like this, it will kusha, yani, mpaka you'll hear it in your grave. Utaske upepo ya pesa All the sweat of your 40, 50 years of work will go. Yeah. Why? Because a godly heritage. And that is why I tell people, listen, my success is important, but my success is not comparable to the success of my children. So there are things that I might have to sacrifice in my journey of success so that I can ascertain that my children have a successful heritage I that so, I cannot I buy. Uh, yeah, so are you, what, what are you saying? I want to just bring us now, you know, to this, the, the, sex, the sex theme. Mm. Does that mean that if I'm, if I'm feeling, uh, if, if I'm falling in love with this Kaneba or, you know, mm. with this chick, as you said, the mm. Kandal in the office and, you know, yeah. the girl who's moved in that apartment next door, mm. are you saying that, so that's one of the things that I should include in that list of things to sacrifice so that my child can get a heritage? You will be wise. You will be wise to sacrifice. sacrifice. You will be very wise. That is what Solomon is saying. My child, pay attention. Yeah. When I, I thought I was wise, mm. I thought I was being Mr. Macho. 
And mm. I thought I was doing myself good because I said I will deny myself no good. I am the son of the most, you know, the most dangerous king to have ever lived. By the time he died, he had left me a secure nation. Yeah. I am the wisest man that lived. Why should I deny wisdom to women by providing seed to them? Yeah. <laughs> Why seed? You know. So, okay. Somebody, seed. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> saying, just before you go too far, please repeat what you have said about my success. About su Your success is important. But the success of your children, of your child, of your children, is of greater importance because they will take from you to the next. If, you, if I succeed and I build a Fortune 500 company, my kids can destroy it overnight. And we've seen that in Kenya. We've seen that in Kenya. Right now, there's huge companies in this city that are going down because a father died. And the children had never been taught to have a heritage mentality, to have, they were taught make money by all means. And some of those, and, and even how we make money, sometimes, you know, and, and the reason why, we are such a sad nation is because even if we cover our sexual gap, our corruption gap is still open. You've stolen money from hospitals to go and build your own uh, five bedroom house in Runda or Karen. And your children have known that that money came from where it came from. And the heritage that they have received is not a heritage of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And you're wondering why your kids are ready to steal anything from you. They are into drugs. They are into this and that. And so your success, the, the parent who will rest, Ernest Wamboye says, if you don't raise your children, you will raise your grandchildren. <laughs> yeah, true. And the reality is, if you don't raise your children and give them a godly heritage, let me tell you, remember that story I said at the beginning? When you grow old and you have to rely on somebody to bring you out to the sun and take you in. Guess what? Kagenge tondo kanakuleta inje. <laughs> yeah. they, they, they will wait, they will sign off. And I'm telling you this because this is something that I've seen happen in some of our homes. The family has actually, the kids have all actually sold their father's assets when the father is still alive. You're being called, being told, why are you not handing over the documents? behind your back. Well, I guess like the other story that you started with, if he can come and have sex in one of the bedrooms while father is having sex upstairs, then I guess yeah. what's a shamba? You can sell that too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, and what you what... think was... Yeah. <laughs> Nikubaya. Nikubaya. <laughs> it's either one we the... fix it all yeah. or we break it all. Yeah. Or was any volume? I'm going to shout. What are the two options we have? Yeah. Build it all or break it all? Yes. Yeah. So build this monogamy thing or break it entirely? And break it, but yeah. also realize that you will break also because the guy who will be corrupt yeah. will not be straight with his wife. Okay. Lie to yourself. Yeah. You go and steal uh, COVID millionaires and then you expect you'll be faithful to your wife after you've pocketed a billion. Now you need, you, you need to have sex with somebody who will last the whole night. But yes. here's the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the celebration mark, come on. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. You need you need you you celebrate those millions with a regular. Yeah. But I, I want us, I we are about to get to our nine o'clock. And last week we ended up getting carried away with these conversations. <laughs> and I'm quickly right. foreseeing us getting there. We need to answer some questions. Mm -hmm. And one of them had to do with uh, spirituality versus morality. Mm. You know, and I, I, and I feel as though that uh, confusion and mixing up morality and spirituality is one of mm. the things that has gotten us where we are at, mm. where we get moral about monogamy, but forget the spiritual aspects and therefore mm. lose, lose all of this. What would you have to say about morality versus spirituality as far as monogamy is concerned? That's one. Then I mm. think the other one, well, somebody was saying the loudest voice is that of our actions. So I think there's an mm. element, and I think you talked about that, where we need to be teaching with our actions, yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah, so answer the one of morality versus spirituality, because I still feel no matter what our mm. past is, yeah. 
we have hope in rewriting the script. Yes, Very true. I mean, like what became our principle and what we permitted was something that our parents didn't talk to us about sex. And so we did try sex mm -hmm. and, you know, it worked the way it worked. Here we are 20 years later, we are discovering, oops, I shouldn't have done ABCD, but now I need to change mm -hmm. my actions so that I can change yeah. the principle for my kids moving forward. I may not no, save my 22 yeah. year old who has had sex, but I might be able to save the 14 year old or I might mm -hmm. be able to save their child. Mm -hmm. So morality versus spirituality, spirituality and then just this place of faith mm -hmm in actually yes. believing, imagine this can actually get better. We are not just going to dwell on yeah. the things we did wrong. Mm. What can we do right moving forward? Let me say this, uh, for you to have any um, solid changes or advancements, there has to be uh, what they call a, 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 an underlying principle. You have to have a rationale for it. Now, um, Getting pregnant, uh, becoming a father at 22 or 19 is not, is not a deterrent, okay? Because it's just a consequence. What is the principle that undergirds why you should be faithful? Why, what is the principle that undergirds why you should do right? And I'll tell you this as a teenager growing up, if I didn't meet Christ at that age of 13, <laughs> that is the truth. Hi, my friend. Uh, we, yeah. jijua. we need to jijua. I, I know. I know where my strengths and weaknesses are. <laughs> I know where my performance factors would have worked. But I met Jesus. And I will tell you this. Many times we try and fix something with the, with the same level of thinking that created it. Somebody said, mm -hmm. we can't fix we can't fix a secular experience with a secular solution. Faith is, soup, is above culture. Our culture is already broken. And I can tell you all of us, if we were to speak for ourselves here, we have stories from either our parents or our relatives who have such dramatics. I, I used to be called by my dad to go and visit a relative, to go and, 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 and stop a fight between my auntie and uncle. Like wame chapana mpaka majirani wame tumanatu itwe. So, uh, uh, all those things are things that we have already dealt with. And so, I'm coming from already a broken place. I cannot fix, I cannot lift myself with my bootstraps. I needed Christ to salvage me. When I got to know who Christ is and the principles that he has laid down for me, that is where my transformation began. I was fortunate that I got saved just when I was getting to high school, just when I was beginning to discover I'm handsome. So <laughs> I'm, I, I'm amongst a few guys who, who didn't do drama out there. And, and But the truth is, I was among those few guys who were able to say, because of Christ, I will not do this. In fact, one principle we had as I had two friends of mine who we held each other accountable. We said, for any person we meet now, lady or guy, and especially lady, we want to leave them better than we found them. That was our principle of operation. Leave her better than you found her. If she falls in love with you, make sure by the time she recovers from her, <laughs> her infatuation, she is better. So encourage her to live right. Journey with her as a believer. Love on her as a brother would love a sister. Do not take advantage of her. When she hugs you, hug just sufficiently for the grace of God to still be revealed and let go. At least to vitu kidogo. It was not easy for a 14 year old to go through that process. Mm -hmm. My friends getting girlfriends, we knew of guys who were sleeping around. Do you think we didn't know what an erection is? We knew. Yeah. yeah. That is why at 25 I was married. I'm like, I'm missing Goji. Yeah. And by God's grace, I was able to. Why? Because the grace of God that has appeared to all men has taught us to say no to worldliness. 
and godless values. It is the grace of God. It is those moments of praying together and say, God, help us. We know if you let go of us, this is Quisha. And so I have a direct connection between my faith and my, and my morality and my values. Remove my faith. Because it gave me an anchor. Because many times when, yeah, and the young guys will offend each other, and will, will confront each other and say, so why are you not having a girlfriend? They're like, oh, because my mom said she'll kill me. They're like, can she see? Oh, because, oh, I, I just don't want. That is not a reason. And let me tell you, kids push each other's battles. They push very intentionally. Mbono mekata. I remember going to an event and guys were having this kid dance thing. Me, I was born again already. Me, I was not going to dance secular music. And, and that, was my, that was my principle because that is how I grew up. And this girl comes and stands in front of me and starts dancing. She was the flyest girl in that school. I'm in a boarding school in Western Kenya. Nobody will know. My pastor is in Nairobi. My friends are in Nairobi. Those guys are in the village with me. They don't come to the city. Guys are like, ah, I wags. Let me tell you the cold water that entered my stomach came from all sides. But I said, I don't dance. And a guy says, ah, I wags, because I'm coca. And the girl says, because, but I'm also saved. Way, the mass is on two of embarrassment. Now, this is, a, this is a dance party. Guys are all dancing on the floor. Me, I'm just sitting there trying to wait for the school bus to take us back to our school. We're in a girl's school. Everyone is having their day. And the spirit of God just put it in my heart to say one thing. I said, then I'm different. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, ile, ile jasho nilikuwa natoka niki, niki chini. I don't think I would wish it on my enemy. Because as a 14, 15, for, as a 15, 16 year old boy, being told you are shy to dance with a girl who has brought herself in front of you and being told because you are saved, we, but let me tell you, the next weekend when we went for music festivals, because we were doing music festivals and drama festivals at that time, all the girls were looking for the guy who said no. Nakombia, I was on top of the... I was up there. Because they're like, who is this guy? Who has values? Who has standards? If I wanted any girlfriend in that school at that time, I would have got from that and any other school. All those guys who are there shaking their waists were ordinary. But let me tell you, it was a huge, yani, it is the next weekend after being laughed at by a whole boys school for a whole week that I got redeemed when everyone, every other girl was now looking to see who is this David guy. That is when they were like, hey, that is when I got a little reprieve but it was not because I had self-control. It's not because I knew better. It's because I knew Christ. Let's cut the chase. You will not overcome this thing by your strength. You will not be monogamous by your strength. And many people have attempted and it has failed. You will not rub off the past of your story stories or the past of your parents' stories who are calling each other out there in the streets by just saying, I have decided me me Dakua a good man. You need the grace and strength of God to guard you. If you don't get that, because God gives you a higher principle than the principle that created the mess we are in. That's the only way we yeah. can fix it. That yeah. is the only way I have survived 21 years of marriage without a single affair. <laughs> I have seen girls. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, hey, me, I work in youth ministry. That is when we're yeah. yeah. When everything is in its right location. And I know what the right location is. I, just because I'm a pastor doesn't mean I don't know. Yeah, and it, by the way, at that point, it has no stretch marks. It is pointing the right direction. Kila kitu iko sawa. And so, it is not, it is not because at you, oh, there is a secret. Mm -mm. When sometimes it's just to go and say, Lord, this one, you hit me with a brick. I'm only picking up salaba. I love to me malaika on the baby. Because if you leave me here, kita umana. Yeah. And God has been faithful. He says, No temptation assists you except that which is common to man. 
but the Lord will provide a way under it. First Corinthians chapter 10. The Lord will provide a way under it by which you can stand. But unfortunately, many of us don't want to stand. In fact, we, we want to just sing, we fall down and we get up for a saint is just a sinner. Hey, your part, because I don't know because of you, I remember, who fell down? But he didn't stay down. Because we want, we enjoy the falling. We enjoy it. Yeah. But I know there is a decision you can make. There is an option you can take and you can give your children a godly heritage, even in this depraved world. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Now, I, I, am, I am not seeing any questions or comments because I think people have actually been talking as we <laughs> went along. And yes, mm. there have been many people telling you, Mara Punguza volume, Mara, you're shouting, you know, <laughs> things like those. But Immaculate had commented and said, we have to keep the conversations with our children going, even when we think they are not listening. But the loudest voice exactly. is that of our actions, right? Exactly. So, and I feel yeah. as though as we keep the conversation going, we have to keep our actions going. No, actually, we yeah. have to align our actions to our, to conversation. our conversations. There, there's somebody who said, uh, I can't hear you. Your actions are screaming. <laughs> Yeah, your actions are too loud. I can't hear what you're saying. Yes, many kids, many kids yeah. actually say that, right? And I think that's what made me make that comment of moral versus other authority. And mm -hmm. I mean, thanks for bringing the fact that monogamy, yes, is actually not, it's, it's not a fantasy. It's a journey that we have to walk and there's only one person who can walk us that journey. Exactly. It's not it's not staying committed to your partner, whoever they may be, mm -hmm. you know, male or female. It is actually Christ who makes us monogamous. Mm -hmm. It's staying committed to Christ. Staying committed to Christ that will keep you monogamous. This, yeah. If if Christ lets me go, yeah. I cannot be faithful to my wife. Joshua Gary. Yeah. And that is why the principle of what is your relationship with God is so key. Uh -huh. Is it is it a growing relationship? Is it a discipling re relationship? Are you becoming what Christ wants you to be? Because that's the other problem we have, and that is why the church is always at the <laughs> in the limelight negatively in this conversation yeah. mm. because even as ministers we sometimes forget that it is christ we are emulating yeah we begin to conform to the patterns of this world there's something i want to leave you with that i think we shall have to have a conversation with another time mm. You says you said something like if Christ left you alone, is it and this one don't even try and answer in a long sentence right now. Is it is it Christ who leaves us or is it us who leave Christ? But that's like I'm saying a question for another day. Everybody needs to ask themselves that question. Everybody, every one of us needs to ask ourselves that question. That's a question for another day. Because what mm. we are saying now, I mean, in conclusion, so to speak. Mm -hmm. monogamy is not something that we are just going to wish away or we are going to try and teach away or preach away monogamy mm -hmm. is a way that a way of life that we are gonna have to show to our kids yes. and that is by tapping from the power from above tapping mm -hmm. god's power having that faith holding on to christ yeah. as much as we can to be able to walk that, that monogamous journey exactly i uh, i love that because that we are going to need to hold on to that. Next week, we are going to be talking about LGBTQIA+. Well, okay. Yeah. Mm. And... Because when, when, it, when it rains, it pours. When it rains, it pours. Today, monogamy, really, we're looking at monogamy, girl, boy, kind of, you know, man, woman, mm. kind of story, right? Mm. Unfortunately, there are lesbians, gays, bi's who are struggling with monogamy. They're struggling with other things, other gummies. Mm, these are other gummies. Mm. <laughs> They're called other gummies. <laughs> yes. And we need to look at when our kids are actually looking up to some of those role models. Mm. You know, because yes, here we are. We have gone the journey that we have gone. And this is not only as parents. As you said, it is mm. societal. Yes. It is that radio station that I have listened to for the last 20 years. I started listening when I was nine. Now I'm about 21. And you're telling me that's not the truth. But I've listened to it every single day, every single morning. Mm. And then one of the things that it has told me is, if the girls don't work, you're a jama. If the girls don't work, try a guy. 
you know if a chick doesn't work try you know this other thing so i need us to then have these conversations next week on yeah. how then do we tap into that faith it's now we are tapping onto it holding onto it to stay faithful to this one person how do we keep that within the conversations of sexuality? So I'm looking forward to having these conversations next week, but I would say thank you very much for putting some things straight. Mm -hmm. You know, as you said, and you, you even finished that statement by saying amen. Without <laughs> holding on to Christ, there's no way you can be able to do this on your own, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing that I've gotten is that whatever we are permitting will become the principle for the next generation. Exactly. So I guess it's for me to go back and think, what is it that I'm allowing right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what am I allowing right now? And yes. am, I, am I willing to even imagine what it's going to look like 20 mm. years from where I am right now? Uh -huh. Yeah, but also I think as we are going on with this, you will tell us how to stop the face, <laughs> how to stop the face being the Christian thing only and to bring this yeah. Christianity into the mind and heart. You will tell us that next week and all that. So Wahika so. has said sex with animals is supposedly legal in other countries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Abana, yep. No, Wahika, that one is coming in the last week, the one for perversion. Is Next it, week, we are only going to deal with the human, the human distortion of sex. <laughs> the, the, the last the week, we shall... <laughs> <laughs> there, are, there are layers, there are categories. Eh? You need, there you are need. categories. <laughs> Lord Otherwise, this story had to because this is where our kids are. I mean, I was looking yeah. at, again, this is now preview for next week. I was looking at some videos and you see, because of the whole cultural thing where women are supposed to be kept at home in Pakistan, for instance, right? Mm. So women mm. are supposed to be kept at home and they're not supposed to be viewed and seen by other people. One of the yeah. things that has been thriving in that country mm. is pedophilia, but especially against boys. What? Yeah, that's one of the things that's really, really going down. And yes, mm. the world is crazy. So we're not going to deal with animals before we have gone to that other level of man to man and woman to woman yes. and all those other things. Yes. Mm -hmm. So thank you very, very much. True. At least, yeah, at least now we know how we need to just hold on to this faith. Mm. Our morality won't yes. work without faith. Monogamy won't work without faith. I can't go loving mm. everybody, you know, kila mahali mm. without, without mm. that faith. Yeah. Now let's see next week, what do we do? And <laughs> this is especially for how are we going to advise our kids? Mm. Yeah, how, that, you know, yes. yeah. How are we going to advise That's, our kids? Thank you, thank you. Um, who is this? Uh, um, Wendy for just sharing the scriptures. Titus chapter two, verse 11 to 14. That is a scripture that I shared with us for the grace of God has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no. Uh, to ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age, mm -hmm. as we await uh, the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself up for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Fantastic. These then are the things you should teach, encourage, and as you should teach, encourage and rebuke with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. These are the Fantastic. days that you will be despised for saying live monogamous. These are the days that you will be despised for saying wait until marriage. But this is the grace that has appeared to us and it is working. Mm -hmm. But you have to play your part in it. May the Lord help us as we deal with the crazies of next week. Um, may, we, we, may we know that God has a place set aside for us in terms of just having the grace to do and ability to do what is right in his sight. Amen. Amen. That even sounds like a prayer. Yeah. Mark. Leo ni kuma waka moto leo. Leo ata siju tu menda wapi. You know, tu metoka monogami fuwab we went somewhere else. <laughs> they are intertwined. <laughs> of course, no, they're not just inter they're in to in it together like this. Yeah, we are entangled. It's either we fix thing. it all or it break we break it all. That is yeah, the, yeah. we fix it all or we break it all. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um for me it is just to give like a I you guys have said everything. I I was just thinking about 
um, this song ya Nairobi ile anakupea ndio ananipea hmm? wanakula fair sote tuna share ogopa sana Nairobi like, <laughs> that is that is replaced our anthem so we Sad. we it is it is a tuko na kazi ya raising the next generation to to fix the eyes on the on the on the right path is a is a challenge we need god um and there's something you mentioned about discipleship and i think that's one one of the things that i believe in and i feel it's core and even when you're talking about your situation and how you grew up when you found christ um i think what i wagat is not also telling you is that he had friends mentors community around him mm. kind of shalling shangliang him and, and urging him home uh, please mm. endelea endelea don't give up don't give up because mm. that's the the only way you make it <laughs> yeah so exactly. so hoping that we can give our kids that environment where tunawa tunawa shangilia na to encourage um i have a few kids who've not yet still uh, beaten the bullet like uh, they are still trying to figure out celibacy they're trying to figure out <laughs> and and i'm still I, i i keep encouraging them every day i'm keeping on pushing them every day so there's hope see there's see hope. what wame wame potea so let's keep uh, having the conversations let's keep setting the example and we will see the difference Mm. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you all for attending and keeping with us mm. as long as you have. And yeah, let's keep fighting for the next generation. Whatever it's going to take, mm. I think each and every one of us is actually up to it. So I'm looking forward to us digging a little deeper and seeing, you know, how on earth are we going to get out of all this? So thank you all. Have a blessed evening and yeah, see yeah. you next week same time. Dilisao mimi ndio naombanga. Eh ulienda kusema sasa nikaona umemaliza. Sorry. Let me let me let me pray for you. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this conversation. We thank you that you are a God who's able. You are a God who mm. can do anything. Uh, we ask and we seek that you can answer our prayers and therefore we just submit our lives to you as much as uh, our situations are broken mm. and and sin has knocked on the door and entered and 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 chafuad and and destroyed even the what the next generation was supposed to get it has eaten lord we come back to you and we we first of all ask for your forgiveness we ask that mm. god you may have mercy on us have mercy on us mm. have mercy on us on how far uh we've gone uh it's mm. sometimes it's an, an, an imaginable how a human being can mess up situations but you are a merciful god and we mm. come to you and we ask for your mercy and for your grace we ask you to to just uh, have mercy on us one more time and we pray that even as we hear this conversations we bring our, your fam- our families before you and we pray yes. have mercy on our families help us mm. to guide our families help us to 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 restore our relationships help us to uh, restore our as uh, our, our, our friendships our, uh, our children into into this mm. conversation help us to understand what your word says and the pattern that is laid in your word that we can be able to to follow it give us the strength um to to stand up just this one more time even as yes. as uh, 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 samson prayed before god and asked give me strength this one more time mm-hmm. i pray that god you may give us strength this one more time that we may be able to stand and stand for you and stand for the legacy of our families and of this nation in Jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. thank you guys amen. thank you god bless you all god bless you all right